Hey, how's it going, YouTube Nation? This video is to geek out with my fellow comic book fans out there. Now and then, I go to my local comic book store and just talk with strangers about all things comic books. I absolutely love it. And this is a talking point that I want to share with you guys and see what you think. Now, of course, when you go to the local comic book store, the one thing everyone brings up and always becomes a point of conversation is Marvel versus DC. Now, I'm going to put it right out there that I'm not a Marvel fanboy, not a DC fanboy. I'm a comic book fanboy. I love both companies. My favorite DC characters are Batman and Lobo. My favorite Marvel characters are Silver Surfer and Magneto. I love Dark Horse, Image, Fawcett, Comico, Fantagraphics, Drawn and Quarterly. I could go on and on and on. I just love comic books. And, but there are realities that come with any type of business. And there's some things that Marvel does better. There's certain things that DC does better. And there's certain things that are hindrances to DC that does not affect Marvel. For example, DC is flat out owned by Warner Brothers. Now you're saying that yes, Marvel's owned by Disney now, but Marvel had a lot of deals already in place with other studios like Sony, where back when they declared bankruptcy, many of those deals that they desperately had to do are now one of the reasons why they have so much money to play with and to create their Marvel Universe because they made these licensing deals and they make licensing revenue. Where DC is owned by Warner Brothers and has been owned by Warner Brothers since the 60s. Unfortunately, unless Warner Brothers has the money to come out with a movie for them or TV series or whatnot, it's not happening. So this is why there are always at least double the amount of Marvel movies versus DC movies. But that being said, Marvel has been planning out their cinematic universe for well over two decades. And this has played out into why their movies get just do as well as they do. Why no one's worried about Doctor Strange. Why Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man, two very niche comic book uh, properties that unless you really knew these characters, you had no, no idea who they were. But now everyone loves Groot and everyone loves Rocket Raccoon and Ant-Man is the talk now when no one cared before. Marvel has just taken their time to create these properties. They're not necessarily better than DC characters, it's just the execution where now DC's trying to catch up. And I told someone at the comic book store, listen, this is a business. He, he was going on that you can't compare Marvel and DC and I was like, you gotta look at this, take the fanboy out of it and look at it from a business perspective. And this guy owns his own company. I was like, if you don't pay attention to your competition, your business is screwed. And for DC, what really kills them is that this is a company that pretty much invented the modern day superhero. They invented superheroes, period. They invented the genre back with Action Comics number one. And Marvel came way after with Timely Comics. but. DC was the juggernaut of this industry for decades. They were number one for the longest time. Now Marvel has pretty much taken them over in comic book sales, in licensing, and licensing revenue. DC's not going anywhere, but they have been struggling with comic book sales and with their properties. And the whole reason why this conversation came about is that we're talking about Suicide Squad and the killing joke that was uh, the crux of this. And now I enjoyed Suicide Squad. It wasn't what I expected, just like everyone else out there, but I actually enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed Jared Leto's um, version of Joker because I know the Jokers had so many manifestations in the comic books, but the ultimate tying line is that he's batshit insane. So I like the fact of him being a gangster, but yet, you know, a mafia boss, but yet still being the crazy Joker that he is. And the abusive relationship with Harley Quinn, I've seen videos of people ranting on that. And I was like, it's the Joker. If you know anything about the Joker, he is not that bring that, the type of boyfriend you bring home to mom. He is violent as hell. And he has a very, very screwed up relationship with Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn's a very screwed up person. But again, I'm not going to go into that. I know there's a ton of videos on this stuff. What I want to talk about in this video is the two ways that DC can own Marvel. Marvel's just better at the movies. I'm, I'm sorry, and I know people are going to argue with me and write all types of horrible things in the comment section, that's fine, but Marvel, again, they're better at execution. They've been planning the long-term game of doing this. DC's now playing catch-up. It's not that DC movies can't be great. I love the, no uh, the Nolan Batman series. Love it to death. Even the third one. And it was Nolan planning out how he wants to create the story. Now DC's scrambling to catch up with Marvel, try to create a cinematic universe like instantly versus over a decade and more with Marvel. But anyways, so DC's always going to be playing catch up and their movies will always be compared to Marvel movies. That's just the unfortunate reality with pop culture. However, there are two types of properties where DC would own Marvel. Own them. 
The first one I'll start with is simple, animation. While Marvel owns DC in the movies, DC owns Marvel when it comes to animation, and even TV. Love Gotham, love The Flash, the CW, pretty much you should just call it the DC Network because they're, I love their shows. DC has done a great job with the production companies to make good TV series and cartoons. Flashpoint Paradox is my favorite DC animated movie. Batman cries at the end. We know Batman doesn't cry. If Batman did cry, it would still strike fear into the hearts of those who do evil. But I love Flashpoint Paradox. And, you know, you have other ones. New Frontier was also cool. It was the first time I ever saw blood in a DC cartoon. Uh, the Killing Joke, everyone's talking about that. When it comes to animated movies, DC, Marvel can't touch DC. Everyone knows that. They just can't touch them. And there was one DC property that was king of them all to me when it came to TV shows, and that was Young Justice. And how they left Young Justice, well, everyone knows why they canceled it. Not because of ratings, not because it wasn't a critical success. Everyone loved it. It's because it didn't sell action figures. Like, we're still in the 1980s. And they left it with a cliffhanger with... Darkseid and Vandal Savage with the War World and Mongols still in the picture and every like they left it in, in such a way that you're scratching your head like how can you leave us with such a cliffhanger? Now, you know we, we know the next cartoons coming out. Um, there's going to be one with Justice League Dark, which I'm very looking I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be a pool to have Zatanna and Constantine and the Demon, you know, giving them their time in the spotlight. So that is cool. But they're also planning to do another Batman. And again, I am a huge Batman fan. I love Batman. You see behind me, got the picture of Batman, uh, this 3D cover I did. I love Batman. But they just keep on going back to Batman. And you have so much more content to go with. And what I feel that they should do, and I know a lot of people agree with me, is instead of doing a live-action Teen Titans, which I don't know why they even thought about doing that, or possibly maybe working with Netflix to do a Teen Titans cartoon, why not just do... A direct movie. Take off or start it from where you left off. With Vandal Savage and Darkseid with the War World. Start it from there. And then just do a 90 minute movie where it's uh, Young Justice and the Justice League together taking on Darkseid and Vandal Savage and the rest of the light. I think that would be a great idea and I guarantee it will be huge. You guys will be rolling in money, like laughing your butts off. Like, I don't know why they're still holding off on Young Justice. I don't get it. This would be the easiest solution. You don't need to do a whole new TV series. Just do an animated movie, so at least for us diehards, and for everyone who's been begging for you to bring the show back, that we have something that at least wraps up a story arc. And then from there, you could gauge the success and come out with a new uh, Young Justice cartoon series. So I'll leave it at that. But the second part I want to get to is when it comes to movies, where again, Marvel does have the uh, higher footing than DC, there's one genre of comic book that DC can own Marvel when it comes to movies, and Marvel can't do a thing about it. And that is war superheroes, war comics. I'm going to name you off some names of DC war heroes that many of you will know. We're talking about Sergeant Rock, the Unknown Soldier, the Blackhawks, Mademoiselle Marie, the Losers, Enemy Ace, one of my favorite uh, wartime uh, DC characters. The Boy Commandos, which was a crazy idea, but again, in a generation of millennials, they could do it in a way that would make sense. The Haunted Tank, uh, Grave Digger, even Spy Smasher, which was a faucet uh, concept before, but we all know DC got a lot of the rights to Charlton and faucet characters, which are now theirs. But there's just a plethora. Just Sergeant Rock alone. Just do a Sergeant Rock movie. War movies do make money. Inglorious Bastards, Saving Private Ryan, there's a whole bunch of them that still do great at the box office and there's still an appetite for them. And Marvel, when you think about the war heroes with Marvel, what do you think of? I guarantee it's one character and they can't really use him per se because he's already in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that is Sergeant Fury, who's now Nick Fury, who's now not even in S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore. But that's... and. You know, Nick Fury and his Howling Commandos, which they've used in the, the, the Carter TV series as well. But beyond that, Marvel doesn't really dabble in war heroes. They, they use their main superheroes as their war heroes back during the World War II uh, times. But DC has so many war heroes. I'm telling you, you could do the Blackhawks and versus Enemy Ace. I think that would be a wicked movie. Now, they did do The Losers. I remember that. It was kind of A-team-ish, and I did enjoy The Losers but they could do so much more. The main point is that 
if DC really wants, or I should say Warner, the Warner uh, uh, company wants to take on Marvel when it comes to movies, yes, you're going to do your superheroes. I'm looking forward to Justice League when it finally gets together. I'm going to watch it, and just like I watched Batman vs. Superman, I've watched it three times. I'm telling you, Warner, if you want to have a leg up and do a type of movie that Marvel cannot touch you on, and therefore you can't be compared to them, it's war superhero movies. Because you, DC, owns war superheroes. You are the company that pumped them out for decades, and you have a fan following for them. And I'm telling you, Sergeant Rock or the Blackhawks versus Enemy Ace, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that um, DC should touch more on their war superheroes, and how would that come out, and how would that compare? But, um, yeah, I just want to wrap with you guys, see what you think. Um, I love, I love this kind of talk about uh, superheroes and comic books and I'm going to share some more ideas on what I think about this and that and I want to touch on stuff that is not just blabbed about by everyone else. So I'm not going to do a Suicide Squad review. Like I said, I didn't mind the movie. I enjoyed it. I've already watched it twice. I'm going to watch it again. I, I think it was entertaining for what it was worth. And, you know, and Marvel DC, I'm going to watch. I watch every superhero movie. Just going to put out even Catwoman. Batman and Robin, some of the worst ones out there. Even the old 90s Marvel uh, superhero, Punisher, Fantastic Four, those horrible ones. I watch them all. Because why? I'm a comic book fan. And I support comic books. So, there you have it. Let me know what you think. And we'll wrap about this uh, in the comment section. Alright? Take care, guys. All the best.